The following is a lecture given by His Holiness Jaya Swami on May 31st, 1984 in New Orleans, Louisiana. The class begins with a reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, Chapter 8, Verse 10. Hare Krishna <coughs> translation. Nanda Maharaj said, My dear great sage, if you think that you are performing this process of purification will make Kamsa suspicious, then secretly chant the Vedic hymns and perform the purifying process of second birth here in the cow shed of my house without the knowledge of anyone else, even my relatives. For this process of purification is essential. Translation. Nanda Maharaj said, Nanda said My dear great sage, dear great sage if, you think if you think that you're performing, that you're performing this, process of purification, this process of purification will make come so suspicious, suspicious, then secretly chant the Vedic hymns and perform the purifying process of second birth here in the cow shed of my house without the knowledge of anyone else even my relatives for this process of purification is essential purport by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada Nanda Maharaj did not like the idea of avoiding the purificatory process. Despite the many obstacles, he wanted to take advantage of Gargamuni's presence and do what was needed. The purificatory process is essential specifically for the Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas. Therefore, since Nanda Maharaj presented himself as a Vaishya, this process of purification was essential. Formerly, such institutional activities were compulsory. Chatur Varnyam Maya Srishtan Guna Karma Vibhaga Saha Bhagavad Gita 4.13 Without these activities of purification the society would be considered a society of animals. To take advantage of Gargamuni's presence Nanda Maharaja wanted to perform the Nama Karana ceremonies even secretly without any gorgeous arrangements. Therefore, the opportunity for purification should be regarded as essential, as the essential duty of human society. In Kali Yuga, however, people have forgotten the essence. Mandaha su mandamatayo mandabhagya hu padrutaha. Bhagavatam one one ten. In this age, people are all bad and unfortunate. And they do not accept Vedic instructions to make their life successful. Nanda Maharaj, however, did not want to neglect anything to keep intact a happy society advanced in spiritual knowledge. He took full advantage of Gargamuni's presence to do what was necessary. How degraded society has become within 5,000 years. Mandaha su manda matayo manda bhagyaha. The human life is obtained after many, many millions of births and it is in the, intended for purification. Previously, a father was eager to give all kinds of help to elevate his children. But at present, because of being misguided, people are prepared even to kill to avoid the responsibility of raising children. Thus end the uh, purport and translation by His Divine Grace Shila Boy Charan Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada of the Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 10 Chapter 8 Text 10 in the matter of Lord Krishna shows the universal form here in, in Sankirtanpur 
मंद सुमंद मथ यो मंद भाग्य उपद्रुत This is the Bhagavatam verse that describes the situation in this Kali Yuga. Mandaha means very bad, very unfortunate. And when you put sumanda, that means that emphasizes it. So sumanda means in, 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 incredibly bad. Matayo mentality uh mental frame manda bhagya bad luck bad fortune all type of disturbances are quite natural and expected in uh, this kali yuga it's not at all uncommon to find somebody completely uh, disturbed in fact being disturbed is almost considered to be a natural state by many people <clears throat> when i first arrived in the uh, new york uh, city i asked uh, somebody in the uh, one of the stores if i could have change for a, a dollar to make a phone call and the person starts swearing at me <coughs> screaming so uh to tell me to get out of there i wasn't dressed as a devotee it was just that uh, yeah was <coughs> he was in a very disturbed uh, state of mind this is the nature of the, the kali yuga that people are disturbed they're frustrated they're unfortunate in so many ways so 5000 years ago <coughs> the basis of the society was uh, that the human being should uh, become purified they should become elevated in spiritual knowledge and they should try to achieve self realization but <clears throat> today things have uh, gone down a lot and people even uh, who are religious so called religious they don't normally have any concept of anything beyond the body everything is uh, centered around the body every uh, activity is uh, gauged by how uh, a person has improved the situation for enjoying the senses or for getting a uh, name fame or some kind of uh, facility for that body that this body this life is a very short uh period in a long series of uh many lives and that uh, we should actually try to become purified in this life so that we can transcend the uh <coughs> the contaminations and bondages of the material world that is generally far from everybody's mind so something in this verse very strong statement that without these activities of purification the society would be considered a society of animals but it's true what is an animal i'm sure everyone heard so many times how an animal has basically four activities of eating sleeping uh mating and uh, defending themselves this is the natural activity of animals so <clears throat> in the modern day prabhupada spoke out that uh, when he landed in uh, australia for instance 
the uh, newspapers. In fact, Prabhupada sent me this newspaper article when I was in Mayapur. The newspaper men uh, in Melbourne, they ask uh, Srila Prabhupada, what is the purpose of your coming here in Australia? And Srila Prabhupada said, I've come here to save you from leading a dog's life. Everybody is a bit stunned. And uh, they said, well, how can you say that we're leading a dog's life? Of course, every civilized person, they don't consider that they're leading a dog's life. They think they're the top of the ladder. So Prabhupada, so-called civilized. So, should the Prabhupada say, well, a dog is having a Sex, you're having sex. A dog is uh, is uh, eating, you're eating. A dog is sleeping, you're sleeping. A dog's fighting, you're fighting. <clears throat> you may do things in a, a more complicated way, but where is the difference in the activities? And then they all laughed and said, yes. So they put in the headlines, uh, was actually in the headlines of the age, biggest paper in Melbourne. Swamiji has come to save us from a dog's life. He said, then the subheading was, he's come to hound us. <laughs> <laughs> and then it explained, actually they were quite uh, true to, they explained Prabhupada's point in the article. It was a very favorable article. The Australians have a sense of humor. Probably in America they declare war if you said that. <coughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't. But Australia, they have a very good sense of humor. So they took it in a very good way. They, they can laugh at themselves. That's fair. They have that kind of a slapstick humor. So basically this was Srila Prabhupada's intention that... Uh, all right, in the West you have everything. You have your economic development, you have good looks, you're educated, you have uh, nice clothing, enough to eat. You have materially everything that anybody can think about having at this time. But what you're lacking is uh, Krishna. You're lacking spiritual culture. You see, just with materialistic culture it's animalistic it becomes uh, it falls short of uh, actually bringing the real happiness that one wants because the happiness that people are running after is happiness that you can get in an animal birth human birth is meant for more there are 8,400,000 species of life and the soul is going from one species to the next until finally after coming through the uh, aquatics, the animals, the, uh, the plants, the animals, you know, well, before that the birds and reptiles and so many things, animals, then finally you come to the human being species but the a dog is running after uh, you, you see that having a uh, mating in the street, having sex in the street. So, human, if they're only running after the same thing, if their standard is just, all right, to enjoy the senses on the same basis as the dogs, I was uh, uh, in, uh, on the pre re previous Namhat tour, we stopped you could see the Himalaya mountains. It was uh, just uh, in North Bengal. And <clears throat> when we travel in India, it's very, uh, you know, <clears throat> every hundred kilometers there's a, a gas station, but uh, basically uh, for when we're traveling, we want to take a shower or want to do something. We just, we just stop by a river. And... Uh, do all our morning duties and everything. Yes. So we were going and uh, sent, uh, <coughs> to uh, 
just come up, it was just dawn, so we stopped by the side of uh, a river, which was, it was a little cool out, but uh, because uh, it was uh, winter and you could see, you know, maybe 65 or something, somewhat cool. Not very cool, but uh, we could see the Himalaya mountains in the distance, and so we stopped the car and went down, and there was, because uh, it was winter, hadn't rained for some time, there was a very big river bed. And the water, of course, was only taking up a fourth of the total area. The other was all like sand. Possibly in the rainy season it, it would rage and the snow from the mountains would come down. So we went to take our, uh, to take our bath. And uh, as we were going down, we saw, when we were taking our bath, we saw there were two dogs there. And dogs are having a good time. They're biting each other, smelling each other, running around, running here. Running. I mean, they're really playing around, having a great time. You know? And then you could see, well, they're having a good time. They're very happy uh, in their in their frolicking and play. And uh, <coughs> and then we walked just a little bit further, and there was a uh, was a a skull and one of the dogs had been looking out inside of it and it was completely dry looking in the stand the bare eyes and the teeth and <laughs> looking up <coughs> and it was uh, just like right before you could see uh, you know well here's the animal life and here's what the end of animal life is you know you enjoy the body and at the end of it you know, everything is like the, the 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 dead body is there. And then you see that you know, you see it's not uncommon to see sometimes people they they normally cremate the bodies, but if somebody's very poor, they'll pay somebody to take the body down, cremate it. The people might be cheaters for porters or they call them coolies there, but uh, for bears take the body down to burn it and if nobody's looking they'll sell the wood and throw the body in the river and let it go and then downstream the dogs get it and like that so sometimes you see these uh, what do you call them, cadavers and uh, in the west normally people of course don't see such things they don't see <coughs> uh, all these different stages of life <laughs> what happens to the body but uh, <coughs> there I was kind of just revealing, I was just uh, very philosophical that uh, people play around and different things, but I mean the body after all isn't going to stay around forever and uh, whatever the, the people in the world are enjoying, basically the same kind of happiness, playing around or uh, the dogs, I mean they were really getting into it with each other, enjoying all different kind of sports and enjoyments that whatever you know, so maybe here we have a Ferris wheel and we have different, you know, discotheque, but same basic activities, it's not like that much different. Same enjoying mood. So, they, they took a poll, apparently, in Europe, that what would people like to be in their next life. And uh, in France, the men said that uh, they'd like to be either a dog or a horse in their next life. And the women said they like to be either a cat or a snake. <laughs> because, uh, I mean, of course, they don't think that uh, what a wonderful opportunity it is to be a human being. They're just thinking that the purpose of life is to enjoy. So a dog is carefree, doesn't have any problem, can just... Uh, you know, lay in the sun or play around, doesn't, you know, human being means you gotta work. This is what they're thinking, you know, has some headache or anxiety or something like that, because we've made society so complex. You know, whatever the women thinking about being a snake, I don't know, but <coughs> anyway, that's the French women's opinion. Apparently the Italian women had a different idea, but I, I, don't, re I don't remember what that was. But basically, people are very confused about life, and uh, you know they may take it all with a you know a sense of humor, or they may take it very lightly. But actually, it's very serious business. That being a human being 
We should be very careful not to again fall back down in the animal kingdom. We should become purified. In fact, we should be elevated far out of this uh, this uh, range of uh, life. We're born with the advanced intellect, not just to use it uh, to work so hard and invest money and uh, uh, make uh, huge industrial uh, uh, complexes and... Uh, make, uh, you know, fantastic investments in the stock market and become multi-millionaires so that we can, like our Fisher Mansion in uh, in Detroit, so he could build a nice place to uh, where he had a ballroom, so he could dance and drink in the big bedrooms and big bathrooms with gold handles. And, and that's basically so, just they can have a nice comfort living, and, and I think this is success. I just... Uh, Somebody handed me a book uh, a couple of days ago. I just opened it up to the page, and it said that, well, one thing you have to realize is that along with success, there are many frustrations. You, you have to know that being, quote, unquote, successful doesn't mean you're going to be happy. But you have to be satisfied with being successful, even though you're not happy. <laughs> Thanks, somebody. <laughs> Don't need that book. <coughs> So this is the basic, they think, they're, they're trying, they, they define what is to be successful, that if you have this, this, this material things, then you're successful. And then they admit, well, you're not going to be happy, there's some, you may, you know, you may have a big house, but, uh, you know, you may get divorced, or you may have uh, many children, but they may all become, uh, you know, misled, misguided, or you may have this, but they all, it may all become very frustrating. And then, you know, so in other words, just to suit this misguided society, they've created false standards of success. The Vedic standard is very simple. A person should be happy. If you're not happy, what is the meaning of success? And happiness for a human being, simply on the animalistic level, is not going to be a complete happiness even if temporarily one is already feels happy or feels somewhat uh, uh, feels some pleasures but then that pleasure you can get in the animal kingdom so what's going to happen is yes they'll regress back into reincarnation back into the animal kingdom so by somehow or another awakening them to their spiritual identity to their spiritual uh, future they the, these, the people in this world they're given the, the best opportunity to come up through so much uh, difficulty to the human species is meant that from here we should go back to Godhead we should go back to Krishna this is what every prophet son of God holy man guru acharya incarnation throughout the ages has said that we should return to the kingdom of God we should uh, become God conscious we should become purified we should you see, but they had to deal with different people in different situations different countries so their specific uh, advices to their followers may have uh, on the fine points uh, diversed but the, the goal of uh, being God conscious or going back to God on the ultimate issue. Somewhere in all these religious books that the human being should become purified and return back to the kingdom of God, that is mentioned somewhere there. It's, it's a goal. But uh, unfortunately, the people they miss the opportunity so the the system of Vedic civilization was geared so that the whole system of Vedic culture is geared so that a person can ultimately become purified from animalistic materialistic uh, life and become elevated to the spiritual platform can actually go forward uh, and not go backward. It's a tamasama, jyotirgama. Leave the ignorance, leave the darkness, 
and go into the light, go towards the uh, absolute truth. Atata Brahma Jigasa, inquire today, now, at this moment, about the uh, absolute truth. So, Nanda Maharaj, he was concerned that here's my son, he should get every opportunity to uh, d become purified, to, to progress towards spiritual realization. This was his concern. This is the basis of uh, Vedic uh, culture. In fact, Srila Prabhupada, sometimes he told us some Vedic, some stories, some humorous stories, uh, Gopal Bhar stories uh, about a court jester. The barber and of the king used to be also the, uh, the court jester sometimes. Or... So it's like not actually court jester in the ordinary sense that we think in the medieval times, but he was almost like a, a member of the cabinet in a certain way. I mean, he was like an advisor, he was very sharp, but there was one person that the king could spoof on. And so Prabhupada told us some of the interchanges between him and the Vedic king. And uh, even those uh, humorous stories were filled with uh, Vedic culture. The culture of spiritual purification, of, uh, of uh, following a, a basic system of uh, advancing towards God-realization, whether in the, in the humor, or in the drama, or in the art, or in any, any facet of life, was, uh, was always visible. All the festivals were centered, all the entertainment was centered about uh, increasing the people's spiritual uh, awareness, their love and faith in uh, God, and in a, in a very attractive, in a very natural way. So, <coughs> of course, today, it's taboo to... Uh, to talk about uh, religion or to uh, to do things which appear to be quote unquote religious. So we are trying to present Krishna consciousness uh, as a culture in many places. In uh, Eastern Europe, we have to tell that we're singing uh, Indian folk songs. Well, it's all right because in India, all the folk songs are spiritual. So and most of them, at least. 50, but not, now maybe there's a few new, but in this way we're able to, in many countries where religion is taboo, but we're able to preach on the basis of culture. Similarly, uh, here in the West, even though religion is uh, not taboo, but the people shy away from it. So, because Krishna consciousness is a culture, but the whole culture is to purify, to uplift, to awaken one's spiritual uh, dormant consciousness. So in this way, the culture itself is uh, purifying. So, we should understand that how deep is this whole uh, Vedic culture, that how it's actually meant to take one from death, take one from suffering, take one from animalistic life, and bring one up to the perfectional stage. It's very practical. Perfectional stage means that one should be always happy. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayujito Janaya Dyasu Bhairagam Yatat Gana Mahitukam. That one should be filled with knowledge, be 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 detached from the uh, from the gross uh, <coughs> attachments of the material world, from the suffering and the uh, enjoyment uh, which uh, tosses one from here to there in the material world. One should be in a very <coughs> firm position as a human being. Not just like the dog, if you throw something, the dog runs. Wherever you throw something, it runs. It doesn't have that type of control. It's very frivolous, very light. Practically speaking, people in the modern 
day, many of them are just like dancing dogs in the hands of sense gratification. They just go wherever they're sent. Even they amass millions, they don't know how to use it constructively. They think that now the purpose is to somehow simply live very comfortably and enjoy, you see. But here at Nanda Maharaj, he's very wealthy. He, what he wanted to do was a big, he would have spent a lot on the spiritual purification of Krishna. He would have had a big festival. In fact, just after Krishna's birth, this famous festival is called Nanda Mahutsam, where he distributed so many cows in charity to brahmanas, and to uh, would gave big feast for all the people. Had a big festival uh, of chanting holy names and brahmanas chanting mantras, and, uh, uh, and just celebrating the birth of Krishna, the appearance of Krishna. So that's the day after Krishna's appearance, which is called Janmashtami, Nanda Mahutsav. That is the day that Srila Prabhupada appeared in this world. So we also observe Nanda Mahutsav as Vyasa Puja. In Mayapur they offered over a thousand preparations for Lord Krishna and Prabhupada's feast recently. So the uh, the festival is there, still comfortable living is there, but simply the that's not the goal. It's not that one has to be uncomfortable or one has to starve or has to beat oneself and uh, try to hate material. But the whole thing is just naturally, if we if we have festivals, if we have our consciousness drawn to Krishna, that is what's purifying. That is uh, what leads us in a very natural way to perfection. Not that just by some type of gross abstinence, but by uh, a sensible regulation, by a sensible uh, regulation of the material senses, and by a very positive engagement in uh, spiritual activities and with such nice activities but so here Nanda Maharaj he couldn't do a big festival so he said at least do the purificatory rites uh, somehow or another even in secret just because these are important I want my son to get the best opportunity he's thinking that Krishna is an ordinary boy he needs to be purified Actually, Krishna, of course, is uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And this is an intimate pastime with Krishna. So Nanda Maharaj, he uh, is uh, not aware of Krishna's real identity that uh, is seen by great realized souls, by, uh, by the great spiritual masters. But Nanda Maharaj, he is filled with a, a relationship of love for Krishna as a parent, and he's thinking, just let me do whatever is best for my son, so he becomes a devotee of God and so on. Doesn't realize that Krishna is himself uh, the Lord. <clears throat> That's by Krishna's own arrangement that when he comes, uh, he uh, allows his devotees to relate with him in a very intimate, loving way. And if they all the time thought that he was God, then they would be uh, very afraid in dealing with him. They'd be very cautious. It wouldn't be natural. It would be uh, awkward situation. So he sets the scene in this way. But the example is given. It gives us an insight. What is the purpose of Vedic culture? What is the purpose of uh, Krishna consciousness movement? It's for purification. It's so that we don't simply uh, end up uh, as a, a dead, uh, as a soul leaving the dead body and then going into another dead body without any spiritual culture. You see, the dead body is going to be just like on that riverside. It's just going to be you know, either it's buried in the ground and is eaten by worms, or it's <coughs> burned and it becomes ashes. Or it's eaten by dogs and vultures and it becomes excrement. That's what this body is headed for. What is this body? This body is the machine of the material nature which is meant, especially the human body, to be used to become purified. To purify our consciousness above the body consciousness where we can see the self and see God. Where we can actually be Krishna conscious. That is the purpose of the human body. Not... 
uh, just like the dogs to run around and to enjoy a uh, you know, little bit of frivolous sense gratification the great Govinda Das he sang uh, in his Bhajahure Manna song he sang Eidhana uh, Jovanna Putra Pari Janna Ete Ki Ache Poro Titi Re Kamala Dhalla Jalla Jeevanna Kalla Malla Eache Ei Nai Jeevanna Kalla Malla Vajahu Hari Pado Niti Re That Eidhana Jovana This the wealth that we are able to accumulate, Adhana Jovana, our youthful life, this wealth, this youth, Adhana Jovana, Putra, children, Barijana, relatives, friends, society. What? What is the transcendental feature of all these things? What is the transcendental value? What is the real spiritual value or permanent eternal value in wealth, youth, friends, family, and society, love? Kamala Dalla Jalla is just like, it's, it's unstable. It's just like a drop of water floating on a lotus leaf. We just saw in the world's uh, fair we went on a, a brief tour because we want to see how they do different uh, exhibitions so we can make similar exhibitions on Krishna consciousness in Mayapur so one of the <coughs> multimedia shows that just happened to show a lotus leaf on the pond being shaken by the uh, and it showed right on there one, one drop of water spinning around on the top of that lotus leaf. I said, there it is, Kamala Dala Jala. In fact, I think it was in the, in the 3D. Just what Govinda Das was talking about. A drop of water on a lotus, the lotus leaf is like lubricated. You put a drop of water on that, it just, it just, it just moves, it beads up into a little ball, but it just moves. It is, it is no stability at every second it's just moving around and coming off and back on and moving around but that's how our life is at any moment here in here in New Orleans man sitting in his house and an eastern airline jet crashes in his house where's the stability sitting having your morning uh, breakfast before you know it you know no wife no kids you got a jet sitting in your house right you think life here has uh, got a lot of uh, stability? Right? You're driving to work and uh, some drunken driver uh, runs the stoplight and you, and you get a uh, side swipe. You walk out in the street and the, and the bus driver runs you over or, you know, I mean, life is Kamala Dalla Jala. It's just like a drop of water, a load of you can't, in any second anything, and you're walking uh, somebody uh, suddenly they have a headache and it turns out to be a stroke or they have a, a little pain in the chest and it's a heart attack or they smoking a cigarette and they end up they get lung cancer that's the only uh, stability whether your life whatever situation it is Krishna is the constant he's the K factor he's the factor who never changes if we lead our life towards becoming spiritually conscious that happiness that we get from the awakening of the self from our understanding our relationship with Krishna is not dependent upon all of these temporary things which do not have any permanent value which can be destroyed or taken away in a second here in America that big uh, car car manufacturer Leaf, Leaf, I forget his name he got arrested for drug dealing lost all his money became bankrupt so one second you're in a big society name fame next you become infamous everybody's out to get you lose everything so this is this is the way of material life even in the time of Lord Chaitanya there was one uh, 
relative of a devotee, but he wasn't himself uh, engaged in devotional service. He didn't pay his debt. Before you knew it, he was about to be uh, to be uh, to be uh, killed for uh, thrown off a cliff. I forget what thrown off some kind of a uh, onto spears or something because he wasn't paying his debt. So material life in one second everything can turn over but there's no guarantee so Govinda Das and the great Acharya says don't base your happiness don't base your life don't base it upon this material standard base it upon God consciousness upon Krishna consciousness base it upon uh, purification for that end and this is what the devotees are doing when they go out and do Sankirtan. Now we have a marathon, so they're purifying themselves and they're giving an opportunity for the people who are in illusion, who are in this uh, unfortunate uh, jivana talamala turmoil situation. They may have temporarily some steadiness, but that steadiness is like the steadiness of the drop of water on the lotus leaf. For a second it may be still, and then something else so the devotees are helping them they are giving them the greatest opportunity by allowing them to engage in some kind of a purification engaging them in some service that is the actual purpose of life is that they should become purified human beings transcend the human platform and achieve the godly platform achieve the transcendental platform so vayipong sangha paro dharmo Yato bhakti na bhoksha ja yayat ahaitu gyapati hata yayat masu prasidati. They should become completely satisfied <coughs> on the transcendental platform. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Any questions? Yes. A serious preacher, well, a person can become a serious preacher in different ways. If one's a serious devotee, one becomes a serious, one can be a serious preacher. If a person is very serious about carrying out the order of Guru, Vaishnav, Krishna, that uh, actually would become also serious in whatever he does, including preaching. If a preacher becomes very uh, concerned about helping the people awaken from their animalistic consciousness and come into their actual spiritual heritage. In that case, they become very serious preachers by developing their compassion, by actually seeing philosophically how people, both those who appear to be happy and those who appear to be suffering are all in a very uh, precarious, unfortunate condition and they need to be uh, helped to become Krishna conscious, to become God conscious, to get out of this entire material entanglement. In material life, happiness is the stepping stone to misery. And misery is the stepping stone to happiness. Sukha dukha da. Lai ja. Matus parasas te kunteya. Sitoshna sukha dukha da. Happiness and sadness are always changing, just like the changing of the, of the seasons spring to summer, summer to fall, fall to winter, winter to spring, spring to summer, like that. So someone's happy, it doesn't mean anything. It just means that within no time he's going to be sad. And even someone's suffering, that doesn't mean that much because after some time things will change and he'll become happy. So to simply try to help all the people who are uh, materially unfortunate become materially fortunate is all right in the material platform, but in the overall spiritual sense that falls short. That, that for us we want to help everyone of course those who are suffering materially 
obviously it's hard for them to concentrate on spiritual life. <laughs> so many of the Krishna conscious services like giving out prasad also do have their material side effects, like feeding their hunger, but the purpose is not to stop there, but to actually give them spiritual happiness. And even rich people, even so-called successful people or happy people, their situation is also uh, one that deserves some sympathy, some compassion, some uh, mercy, that they could actually become spiritually uh, situated because their situation is very unstable. Very soon they'll also be put into material suffering if they're not already in it. So the devotee becomes very compassionate to the fallen soul, wants to see them become spiritually happy, wants to see them end their suffering. This is one way of becoming a very serious preacher. Or if one in general takes up the mood of the spiritual master in Krishna and wants to carry out their instructions, it would also be very serious. Any other question? Yes? The, uh, of course, I have never had it, uh, I never had it explained exactly in that way, but it seemed uh, to be always explained in the progression of uh, breathing, of getting oxygen and sunlight. The plant gets more oxygen and sunlight, somehow that's a uh, advantage in this planet. But uh, exactly, uh, I could just like the mammal fish, the whales are, and the porpoises are definitely much more intelligent than the other fish. In fact, they found that porpoises are, have a language and they communicate and they've saved many sailors to see. But, of course, uh, I have not had that authoritatively uh, explained in the Vedas, so really I don't have that. The, uh, confirmed answer <coughs> but uh, I don't have the couldn't quote you the verse so better better than you saying anything. within the aquatics there are all these little amoebas and bugs and things and uh, their state of consciousness is really down there Cells and things, but uh, within certain categories, you'll probably find different. It's like you'll find different uh, mm -hmm. levels also. Yes. <laughs> Drive the road. They don't take birth as dolphins. It's very hard for a dolphin to engage in self realization. <laughs> well. <coughs> dolphin, uh, may of course chant the holy names of God but they don't have much facility to do any of the other spiritual practices maybe they can do some meditation <laughs> but uh, so they have to eat live fish and <coughs> basically they spend their time swimming around all the time Yeah. 
don't know if it's appropriate for the Vyasa sign. Yes. One devotee in 1966 had a job driving the mink coats from the go-down to the store, to the warehouse to the store. Prabhupada told him to give up the job because we don't want to be engaged in <coughs> anything to do with uh, <coughs> slaughtering or killing of animals, including even transporting. He's just a truck driver. It's not good because anything until the final product is sold and used by the end user everything from the trapping, killing, all the way up is uh, implicated <coughs> when I w joined the movement and then went to Montreal, we didn't have book distribution we got a notice from our uh, landlord we had to pay the rent or get out or something so Prabhupada was there, He's, uh, he didn't have a green card that time and his visa had expired, so he's waiting for the, the temples in America were applying for a green card and so he could come this day. So I got a job in a uh, BMW uh, coffee shop, you know, even though my previous family was rich or whatever, but this, this had made some kind of a job, so somehow I got a job there, and they, they, they told Prabhupada that uh, he has to uh, clean up. I was just a clean up boy to the job for a month or something, just to pull, up, pull the temperature. <coughs> and uh, it's a bhakta. And uh, he's a clean up boy and he cleans up, you know, the used plates after they're finished, which, you know, contains, uh, you know, meat and things out, like hamburgers or whatever. So, uh, well, probably said, well, it's that that's after they've already eaten. So it's the person who kills, who who sell, who raises the cow, sells to the slaughterhouse, transports <laughs> it, kills it, transports the meat, cooks the meat, and the final the person that eats it. So that's already after the fact. There's no karma in that. The blind uncle is better than none. That's when he said that. It's better to have a blind uncle than no uncle. So at that time we needed we needed the money. So. Better they have a bad job than no job, and it wasn't. It was after the karma fact. So now the devotees are very fortunate; they don't have to work in such hellish conditions. In most cases, they can do sankirtan and they can uh, work in a vegetarian restaurant and uh, serve the people. You know, <coughs> we had to do so many things just to uh, subsist. Then, but uh, as far as the karma is concerned. Uh, we don't deal in anything with leather, especially because, uh, well, that's uh, encouraging this whole slaughtering process. In India, when a cow naturally dies, you, you just like our madrangas, are only made from cows who die naturally. All slaughterhouses, when they kill the cow, they put salt on the hide to preserve it. But madrangas cannot be made from uh, cow skin that has salt that has salt in it. So when the cows die of old age, then you call it tanner, skin it, and he takes off the skin and he dries it in the sun, and that can be used for shoes or for. Uh, they use they nowadays that they use it for shoes, but in the Vedic time, I don't know if they use it for shoes or not. Hmm. They might, have, but uh, they will use it for madrangas and uh, tablas and things like that. The straps and the you don't know, we all have fiberglass here, but uh, in the original clay madrangas, it's with leather straps, and those are from cows that die naturally. So Prabhupada said, if you want to eat cow meat, let the cow die and then eat it. 
He said, well, then the meat's tough. Well, it's not a very, it's not a very good uh, <coughs> point. Well, it'd be uh, <coughs> easy to get some garments, but uh, if one is uh, trying to avoid it, basically avoid karma. You're responsible for what you do. The people that live with you, what they do, they're responsible. The only thing is by association you may be led into doing those things. And that a type of association wouldn't be very conducive for uh, developing one's spiritual consciousness. Some people are able to take a lot of association with devotees. I know some women who are married and their husbands are, they don't say, well, you can practice, but I'm not interested. And, and they meet the women, <coughs> the wives, they chant, and they follow everything in their house, and they, <coughs> they cook vegetarian for their husband. But when he goes out, he may eat anything. So uh, they're able to maintain, it's <coughs> difficult, but... Uh, they take association of devotees. They have a lot of children. They live in a society where there's no real alternative for them. But somehow they're able to maintain. It's very difficult, but uh, we've seen them. Some people are able to do that. Normally, in the in the western, uh, northern European countries, nobody would have that much patience with a fallen husband. Right? And society doesn't demand it, but in other places, it, no, uh, it's, uh, it's more difficult for a woman to to disentangle one herself in that situation. Yes. Well, it's, it's recommended to use uh, with vinyl or some other kind of leather substitute. Maybe that one piece. In India, just put out of the corner, corner shoe man on the corner and he just put a, <laughs> put a any strap you want. Put 25 paisa to a quarter of a cent. But uh, I don't know in America we can do it. But you should, uh, for preaching, of course, you know, a person can do can use these things if they have to for preaching, but if there's an alternative, then better to use a substitute. While you're preaching, somebody may say, look at you wearing leather. But uh, we don't have to be fanatics. Like in the winter, you're working on the farm or something, it's, it's in like Canada, Canada or something, sometimes you have to wear boots. Utility is the principle. If you have a choice, then choose the the more nonviolent. But if there's not a choice, or if it's uh, then do what do what will you know that we we, have, we can't walk barefoot. But <laughs> if there isn't a, a better choice, then do what you have to. What's temple president and the purchaser? They'll be responsible for giving you those anyway. What did you think they were? I thought they were apples? Frozen food. That's why it's best not to buy frozen vegetables. Buy fresh vegetables and cut them up. I mean, they're 
So they said you should avoid. They said you should avoid eating those things. If by accident you eat them, it doesn't mean that then you should give up your spiritual life or something. You should, whatever the bad effect of that on your body, you have to tolerate and just pray to Krishna that your spiritual progress won't be impeded. It was an accident. Try to avoid it. Well, we have to be very careful uh, because uh, some of the uh, some of the people uh, uh, with with him are uh, are very uh, envious against uh, the Krishna conscious movement, and they want to discourage people, and they're very diplomatic in presenting it, but the uh, actual ideas uh, they have somewhat of a, a different philosophy which uh, and some of them are offensive so we, we generally try to just avoid their association because uh, we don't want to be I mean if you meet some on the street you'll have to run away holding your ears or something but of course you can do that if they say something offensive but just avoid the association because Maybe later on things will improve, but there are some uh, people there who uh, are uh, inimical, and so that we don't, because just to avoid hearing any offenses, so it's better to avoid. They can't do anything to help us, but they can do something to harm us at the present time. Uh, Bhakti Lotika. Uh, Tia, we need to have an alternator. Well, you should you should analyze every feeling and thought with uh, feelings and thoughts and the philosophy of the scriptures. If your feelings and thoughts are the same as the spiritual masters' expressed desires, the explanations of the Vedas, you should analyze that. But as a uh, newer devotee, you should. You should give deference to the uh, to the older devotees, uh, at least uh, socially, in in your behavior. And uh, <coughs> if you don't agree with something that they're doing or saying, then uh, later on you could uh, inc make an inquiry from the you know, from the spiritual master, some very senior devotee, that uh, who is actually correct, because. Uh, and it may be that sometimes uh, you uh, you are correct, but in minor things, it's not worth a disagreement. Just like maybe the corporal sometimes is correct and the sergeant isn't, but the corporal follows the sergeant because that's the way it is. And later on, he's going to be a sergeant and the sergeant, in a way, a sergeant major or some a lieutenant or whatever. He'll move up, but the sergeant who makes mistakes, he's not going to go anywhere. So we're not attached. But uh, <coughs> we have to follow a certain whatever the service is. If there's a, a something like a chain of command or something, then we should follow that just so that we avoid uh, wasting, we waste more time over a small point. Someone may say it's better to sweep the floor with your right hand, and you may be a lefty, so it's actually easier in left hand. It doesn't make a difference what hand you sweep the floor with. But, you know, just you can have a whole argument, but then. You know, just whatever. So, you know. 
example you want to use. <coughs> it's better to analyze everything by the scriptures, by the words of the spiritual master. If you don't know, well then, your own opinion shouldn't be given too much about credence unless it's confirmed. If you have an idea, you should try to get it confirmed. Is this a good idea? Is this correct? Is my understanding proper? According to the Vedas and the spiritual master. Back to Lodiga. Lodiga back to. Pardon? Why only the six Goswamis? Lord Chaitanya, the Panchatatra, spiritual master. Krishna and his Sankirtana are not different. Wherever there's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all of his associates are. <laughs> How? Sure. So I, I, any new? I think the no, question is late. God save you. Are there any more new people who haven't asked any question? They want a question answered. Do you have a question? Well, purificatory. Purification is essential. The uh, the purificatory rites given in the Vedas are prescribed, but in Kali Yuga, because in this present age that we're in, because people haven't uh, had the opportunity of all those purificatory rites. They are an aid, but they're not the end in themselves. It's recommended that one should chant the names of uh, Krishna or the names of God, and that this is the ultimate purificatory rite or the ultimate purification is to constantly chant the mantras or the names of the Lord. So there are unlimited names of God. Nam nam akari bahudani jashara vashaktis. So one may chant. The name Krishna, or Govinda, or Rama, or Hare Krishna, or one may uh, chant some other bona fide name of God, but especially chanting the holy names, this is recommended in this age. So we have been handed down this uh, Hare Krishna chant as being a very effective and very powerful combination of the names of the Lord which are especially recommended for this age. But we don't say that uh, these are the only names of God that, you, that somebody can chant. If they want to chant other names, well, they can do that. That will be the mo more effective than any other purification in this particular age for spiritual progress. But if someone doesn't have another name or if uh, one is open-minded and can see that, well, that these names are effective, so why not chant them? Well, then we invite everyone to take this opportunity and chant Hare Krishna because Krishna is just a name for God in Sanskrit, but these names are very uh, time proved to be successful. There are other names which uh, are also names of God, but which may address a different mood or aspect of uh, the Lord or 
a different uh, a different so there a different kind of vibration which may not be as effective for purification still it will be more effective than another process in this particular day vibration is the way of purification vibrating these sacred uh, or transcendental names Do you chant Hare Krishna? Have you tried it? Why don't you try it? See if you get any effect, any benefit. Mantra means to deliver the mind, to uplift the consciousness. One doesn't have to be. Uh, the temple is a place where it's very convenient to chant. It's it's set aside for that purpose. We can hear, and we can chant, and we can read. But uh, it's not limited to the temple. You can chant in the park. You can chant on the bus. You can chant while you're walking. You can chant. There's so many spare moments. Instead of instead of putting our uh, ear to a ghetto blaster, and uh, it's, it's not going to purify us. It's just adding more fuel to the fire of our uh, anxieties and dissatisfactions <coughs> that uh, in this way it's very easy to purify the consciousness and a person comes to that transcendental platform very easily so one doesn't have to be tied into the so-called organized aspect of it even in a very uh, free way one can uh, chant any, anywhere any time and this is the the wonder and the, the benediction or the special gift of Lord Chaitanya's movement that uh, he wanted that people be able to practice in their own homes but it is a it is a an, it is a beneficial it's conducive for someone who wants to advance in a spiritual life to get the association of like-minded spiritual people that provides a, a type of an atmosphere which is uh, conducive for meditation and for spiritual practices once a person knows the basic uh, is a little bit habituated or has learned the processes of meditation where they can perform it anywhere anytime so is that all right Right. The devotees, uh, if they're waiting in a line at customs, you know, sometimes it's big lines and in international flights, you're stuck there for 45 minutes, so they chant, what are you going to do? So there's no, there's no uh, time which is really allowed to just go wasted if, if we have any time or can always be used for chanting and that keeps the consciousness in a very purified very awakened state and in this way uh, everybody has so many spare moments and so they try to fill it up with something or another but uh, by chanting one is actually making uh, steps back uh, in uh, making steps forward in spiritual progress going <coughs> towards uh, the goal of life which is to become completely awakened to become completely uh, aware <coughs>